Hello, this is The Provoked Prawn, and I'm here to talk to you about my experiences with the Rodecaster Pro 2 that you can see here. Now, this is an interesting device, but I want to talk to you about my experiences with it several months after I originally had it. I've been using it basically since then, apart from when I've been testing other things. But I have a very specific use case for it, and I think that might be useful to some people that are doing the same thing. So obviously I'm a content creator. I mostly use this for doing voiceovers for YouTube videos. But I also am a streamer and a gameplay content creator and a gameplay channel. And I'm dabble in Twitch and other things. So I want to talk about my experiences in both sort of avenues and how the Rodecaster Pro 2 is good and bad at some of these things. And I think it's worth sharing this. This is all subject to change because it may well change with firmware updates, but I've been waiting for a firmware update that's not come yet, and that's been a little bit of a frustration, so I want to talk about that. Now, one of the things that's really interesting about my upgrade path, so I want to talk about my journey into XLR microphones, how I got to where I am, and why I'm using the Rodecaster Pro 2, and why I actually think it's one of my favorite devices, because I'm, you might get the impression from the beginning of this video that I'm being negative about it. Actually, I think it's fantastic and I'm going to talk to you about why. But I started off with a number of USB microphones, like most people, with the Blue Yeti, for example, and then moved through a number of other devices into eventually XLR. And once I got into XLR, I started with the Go XLR Mini, and then I upgraded to the full-size version, which I used for quite some time. And then between that and Rodecaster Pro 2, I was testing other devices, I went into the Rodecaster Pro 2, but also Roland's devices, Razer's Audio Mixer, and a few other devices of varying quality. And now I'm on the Rodecaster Pro 2, which is a very expensive bit of kit if you're looking to buy it outright. But it is fantastic for a number of different reasons. And one of those reasons is what I found with getting into XLR microphones, and if you've gone in this journey, you'll know what I'm talking about, is that it can be quite tricky to set up a microphone, especially something like the Shure SM7B, to get it sounding right, to eliminate a lot of background noise, get it sounding rich, get the quality just right, make sure you're not clipping and all those other things. And by the way, this microphone here is very good at that. And I've done a video separately on that that I'll link to in the description. But it, it is a real faff to get right. But that move into XLR also opens up world of possibilities in terms of multi-channel audio routing and the flexibility around those sorts of things and the tweaks that you can do for the routing of audio, especially for streaming. So if you've got a Go XLR or a Go XLR Mini, the flexibility around that is fantastic. And I want to focus about that in a minute as well, because that beast of kit is really good for that. But that only allows for one XLR connection. And the Rodecaster Pro 2 is like a next level thing. It's basically an all-in-one sort of studio set up really because you've got up to four XLR microphones that you can plug into it. You can see that I currently have the blue sonar plugged in there, for example, alongside the Rode NT1. So I'm using both microphones. One's muted, but you could be using both. And you can set up to four mics, have a podcast set up with multiple people sitting around talking into it. You can record directly onto it, which I actually do it now as well, rather than into your PC. And you can set up various other things, including Bluetooth channels and sample sounds and all sorts of things in there. It's a really powerful tool, and I've gone into a lot of depth on all the different things that you can do with it in my review, my initial review. And I'm not going to cover them all now here because I want to talk about the specifics of it. So I'm going to start with the highlights, the things that I really like about it. And that is that it's really easy to plug in almost any XLR microphone and get it sounding great without any faffing. So if you found that you have an XLR interface and you've really struggled setting up the microphone and getting it sounding right, or maybe you've had more than one XLR microphone because you just couldn't get them sounding good, then I'd say the Rodecaster Pro 2 is fantastic for that. And the reason is quite simple, because you can basically go into a mic and go through a variety of different settings. So you'll see that you have a variety of different options in here. You can basically go through and choose different types of mics. So you can see that you've got the pod mic, for example, Procaster, NT1, NT14, RE20, even the Shure SM7B. So this thing's already set up to basically allow you to go into the settings for each of those microphones and basically set them up immediately. And it will do condenser and dynamic microphones. It has the 48 volts of phantom power if you need it. And you can also tweak and apply various different processing settings. And like the default sounds for a lot of those 
are really clean. This NT1 is a perfect example of that because it's just plug and play. You plug it in, you select that microphone from there, and then it's automatically just sounding great. You just have to adjust the gain a little bit, but not much more than that. Whereas something like the GoXLR, you have to adjust compressor settings, noise gate, EQ settings. You're tweaking all sorts of things, stuff that might well be out of your comfort zone and knowledge level in order to get sounding right. And you have to go and look at loads of other YouTube videos or guides on what the best sound settings are for it. And it can be a real faff. Not That is not the case with the Rodecaster Pro 2. So from a YouTuber point of view, from someone that's reviewing microphones, it actually makes my life a lot easier because I can just plug and play with those microphones. However, I do also have to think about what that experience would be like for most people because most people probably wouldn't buy this microphone and necessarily run it with a Rodecaster Pro 2. They might buy an expensive microphone but a cheaper interface and then they might need to know what that's like. So I often end up testing the mics with multiple different interfaces. But from a plug and play sort of point of view, the Rodecaster Pro 2 just beats the competition from my experience, just hands down so much easier to just plug in a XLR mic with ease. It basically makes XLR microphones plug and play, which they aren't naturally. They are plug in and faff around for ages before you can play, but that's not the case here. So that's pretty epic. It also obviously does a lot of other things. So for example, you can see that you've got multiple different hardware sliders. You've got levels on here that you can adjust and go between those different levels. You, this one here, for example, I've got a USB chat set up so that my friends, when I'm talking on Discord, you can hear them on there. I can mute them with ease, so you can just mute that channel. You can stop yourself from hearing it really easily. And then you've got USB 1 and 2, so you have the sound from those going into there. Then I've got my usual microphone, which is the Shure mic on that channel. You can adjust the volumes up and down on there and really easily adjust between all these things and tweak the audio really simply. You also have these buttons along the side that you can apply different effects, whether that's sound effects or set effects to your voice and other things, again, and there's pages and pages of them, so you can create multiple different pages of those. And you've got individually adjustable volumes for each of the headphone jacks, so there's headphone, multiple headphone jacks as well as multiple XLR ports on there. So it's really powerful and capable in quite a few different ways. But what I want to talk about and show you now is a demonstration of how it's not powerful in some other ways that it really should be for um, streamers. So now what you can see is I've put the GoXLR full size alongside the Rodecaster Pro 2. And the reason for this is I want to talk about some of the features that the GoXLR has that the Rodecaster Pro 2 doesn't have. And this is important, I think, because it demonstrates some things that I really missed from the GoXLR that just aren't in the Rodecaster Pro 2 yet. Now, caveat that by saying that they might well be at some point. There may well be a firmware update which fixes this issue. It has not come yet, and it's a real shame because I think it lets it down in a number of different ways. But the simple things. So, for example, and I have shown this in other videos, there's four pads here and they're actually linked into different modes. Now, this isn't set up properly, it's only got power. You can see I haven't got a mic plugged into it or anything like that, but I just want to demonstrate the logic of it. So these sample pads here, you can apply different sounds to and you can do it within Windows, within the GoXLR software. You can just push a sound into that, press that button and it'll automatically play back and you can get it to play on your stream audio or to your friends on Discord or both. The other thing that you can do is you can press and hold that button and it will record whatever's being played through that channel. And the audio routing means that you can actually record different things from different places. So I actually did a video a, well, a long time ago on how you could use this to record what your friends are saying. So you could press and hold that. If your friends are chatting on Discord, you could capture what they're saying and then you could let go and it would capture it and it would save it. And then you could just press it again and again and again and you could just replay what they'd said with hilarious effect and entertaining entertaining ways. And you could sample this, you could actually use this to sample different things. So you could sample a bit of music or some sound that was playing in Windows or even game audio or your own microphone and it's just automatically there. Now you have these buttons on the Rodecaster Pro 2, they don't do that unfortunately, they don't have the same logic. If you want a sound effect to play on here, you have to go into the Rode software, you have to program that sound into it and then you have to press that button. You can't press and hold it and then capture that sound on the fly and then be able to press the button to play it back. It's a small thing, but it's something that you've, you're paying a significant amount more money for the Rodecaster Pro 2 
and it doesn't have that really simple feature that the Go XLR does. Now, the other thing that's really powerful about the Go XLR, if you're a streamer and a YouTuber or content creator in the gaming space, is that this thing has virtual channels. So yes, you've got hardware level sliders on both of them, but the Go XLR outputs multiple different virtual audio sources in Windows. You have game audio, you have Discord audio, and you have music audio, and you have other things. The thing that's interesting here is that what you can do, and I did a video on this that I'll link to in the description, but you can set this up in different ways. You can make use of those virtual audio channels. So what you can do is you can take the virtual audio channels that are in here, and you can put them into OBS. So if you're recording an OBS, you can take, for example, your Discord audio, your game audio, your mic audio, and separate them out into different tracks as you're recording an OBS. And this enables you to then put one mixed down source, so the broadcast stream mix, out to your audience on Twitch, for example. But if you're recording, you can also record multiple different audio tracks that you can then capture. So when you go in, if you're recording clips on your YouTube channel, for example, you then find that those clips then have multiple different audio tracks on them. One, for example, might be just the gameplay sounds. One would be just the Discord sounds, so your friends chatting, and one's just your microphone. And that is really powerful because what might happen, and what happened to me a lot, what I found was I was in a position where I was playing with my friends, something really funny would happen. I would try to record it, so save the last five minutes of gameplay, for example. And then I found that my friends were just talking nonsense over the top of the gameplay. Maybe they were talking about their day or just something that had happened to them that was completely irrelevant to whatever was happening on that particular gameplay section. And they just ruined my clip because I couldn't use the audio because it was terrible. But because I'd set up my Go XLR in that way, the OBS recording then featured multiple levels of audio. So all I had to do was just delete the track or reduce the volume of the track on Discord where the Discord audio was. Suddenly they're not talking in a scene where they were before. Now all you can hear is the game audio and maybe my reaction over the mic to what was happening. And then you've got a fixed audio clip basically so I've saved that clip now weirdly you can't do this with the Rodecaster Pro 2 that technology doesn't exist it does have separated virtual audio sources in that you have chat for example and you have your microphone and USB set up but you don't have the ability to choose virtual sound sources for things like music and game audio at this point. So at the time I'm making this video, you can't do that. So that means that I can't now do this. So essentially you just have that one source outputted audio into the OBS stream. So you're recording one sound source into there and there's just no way around it that I know of, that I can see. They did say they were going to work on a firmware update that would sort this out, but it's been months and months and months and it's not happened. And I really want to go back to the Go XLR because I miss that when I'm playing with my friends. I really miss that. And I could do, you could see I've got it here. But I choose not to because the quality of the Rodecaster Pro 2 is undeniable. It makes the Shure SM7B sound a lot better. It makes other microphones sound a lot better. It cuts down on a lot of the hassle of a variety of other things really easily. So it's a fantastic bit of kit, but it's missing those key features that for me make the Go XLR the best option. If you're streaming, if you're content creating, if you're making videos, gameplay videos, and you want to separate out those audio sources, the Go XLR actually makes a really big difference there. And also the sample pads just lead to some hilarity as well. So those are little things that, I wish the Rodecaster Pro 2 had. And then, obviously, you've got to ask yourself from a value for money perspective as well, is do you really need all the other things that the Rodecaster Pro 2 can do? Like, realistically, if my Rodecaster Pro 2 broke, would I buy another one? I don't know, because they are very expensive. Basically, the, the Go XLR is like half the price, and it's still really powerful. As long as you do the tweaking to get the sound right, you've got really good audio capture and then the virtual sound channels the sample pads and other things but 
there is a lot to be said for the Rodecaster Pro 2. I've never had any issues with different microphones. I can easily plug in a headset, a wireless headset with a 3.5mm connection and not get any problems with static interference or anything like that. The mic monitoring is great. The sound is great. The usability is great. It's a great looking piece of kit. There's loads of reasons why it's fantastic. I just wish we had those virtual audio sources. So, Rode, if you're watching this, please, please, come on. For us gamers, just just bring that one feature out. <laughs> but if you're a podcaster or you're just doing voiceovers, then you probably love it because I do. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend, you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.